Hello everyone. The clip you're about to hear is from one of our exclusive Patreon episodes, and like all of those episodes, it may contain spoilers, so consider yourself warned. If you like what you hear, head over to patreon.com slash horrorqueers to listen to tons of bonus content. And now, without further ado, here is your exclusive Patreon clip. I realized that I think this and Resident Evil were really good gateway horror films for teen girls. You know, Resident Evil is R-rated, and this one is sort of R-rated, but... Yeah. I mean, the violence seems less extreme in the Underworld movies, if only because it seems a little more fantastical to me. But I think the fact that there's these two kick-ass heroines and the movies mm -hmm. were alternating between each other. I think we talked about this on our Resident Evil audio commentary, too. But Like, because like, that was 02, this is 03, and then like the next Resident Evil is 04, the next Underworld is 06, and then Extinction is mm -hmm. 07. It's, yeah, it's like, it's like alternating years, so... Um, also drink, by the way, uh, this is all exposition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't lie. When I rewatched this in anticipation of this audio commentary, one of the things that really stood out is how overly complicated the yeah. mythology is. Like to a certain extent, I'm just like, say that you're at a war between vampires and lichens. Also stop saying lichens, just call them werewolves. I know. Well, and she does call them werewolves at one point to, when she's yes. talking to M Michael. She's like, oh yeah, for you laymans, it's a werewolf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's so funny. Like, when I was 13, 14, like, I was like into all this mythology. I was like, yes, oh, mama, sure. give it to me. <laughs> well, and if you look at the reviews for the film, a bunch of them actually praise this film principally less so <laughs> subsequent installments yeah but they talk about how oh you know they kind of did the work it's got a great visual style in terms of the gothic architecture this is filmed in budapest by the way and a lot of critics said yeah i appreciate that they went this extra mile in developing a deep rich world building mythology which i agree with yeah i think it's just that they presented in an overly complicated manner yeah it's this screenplay needed another like look -see or two um just to simplify things because again it's yeah. really not that complicated but they just no. keep explaining it and re-explaining it and re-explaining it <laughs> Yeah, I think there was one part where I just I didn't understand why Craven was in charge. Oh, get ready to drink again. Oh, yeah, drink for that. I do love the look of it, though. She just hits the ground and keeps on walking. I mean, Celine is a badass. Like, hey, Beck and Sale. great. I, I'm truthfully, like, surprised that she came back for all five of these movies, especially when, like, oh, yeah, I mean, she's a bigger star than Scott Speedman. And even he peaced out after the second movie. Well, also because his role sucks. Oh, it's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him more on this rewatch. I was appreciative of the fact that he has, I think, the hardest role to play because he isn't very exciting until the end of the film. Very much so. I, I also appreciate too. I mean, like, so right, you know, we're in this subway and we just like bust out guns in full view of the public. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, one of the things that stood out for me is this reminds me so much of the kind of climactic scene from The Matrix. Like, I think this movie owes a oh, lot to yeah. the lobby scene in The Matrix, particularly this sequence. Well, and this would have come out the same year as, I want to say Revolutions. That was 03. No, maybe that was I Reloading. So. I think they're both 03, actually. Uh, they were like a year, they might have been the beginning and the, the end, end of the year. year. So I, yeah, it's either 2003 or 2004. Well, also, um, Kay Beckinsale married director Lynn Weissman the year after this came out, but they divorced back in 2019. Oh, man. Can I tell you about the rabbit hole? I fell <gasps> down researching the relationships because she was fucking Michael Sheen. Oh, Yes. She is the reason that he is in this movie because she was like, hey, Len Weitzman, can we get my boyfriend into this movie? And then she cheated on him with Len Weitzman. <laughs> okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So I thought I thought you went the other way. Also, I love the, the, this Ray's guy when he just goes, blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's every trailer for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is the most unrecognizable I've ever seen Michael Sheen in the movie, in, in, in anything, by the way. What's weird, I have to look up his age, because he looks really fit and hot in this movie, and I was like, how does this compare to the way he looks in something like the Twilight movies, where he's got the similar long hair, vaguely European, and... 
there's a good 10 years difference, but he is hot in this movie, apart from the hair. See, and yeah, like, I agree. I, I mainly know him from this. I did watch all of Masters of Sex, and um, he oh, right. he plays Liz's, uh, Tina Fey's obnoxious boyfriend, Wesley Snipes, in 30 Rock. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay, I'm also looking at his thing, by the way. So he, he's been married five times. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Kate Beckinsale from '95 to '03, some woman named Lorraine Stewart from '04 to 2010, Rachel McAdams from 2010 to 2013, Sarah oh. Silverman from 2014 what? to 2018, and then he's been married to someone named Anna Lundberg since 2019. Um, hmm. I mean, no shade. The problem might be him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he just really likes marrying women. I guess. <laughs> Anyway, so we have a big shootout, a big scuffle in the subway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, Atlas Avenue, a long stretch of road that encompasses everything the city of Kennet Heights has to offer. Neon lights, traffic, crime, the hustle and bustle of everyday life, and the craziest of characters. My office was above it all. My name is James Locke, and I'm a P.I. Hello, Mr. J. How the hell you doing today? Good, Edith. Nearly every year I have a new case. New people to meet, new clues to discover, and new problems to solve. But I do it the old-fashioned way. No technology. Nothing post-1950. Hell, I don't even listen to podcasts, but you should. Atlas Avenue Beat is a spoof of the film noir genre with goofy characters, tons of wordplay, and nonstop raunchy humor. There's also three whole seasons out right now with more on the way. Just search for Atlas Avenue Beat wherever you listen to podcasts or visit us online at bloody.fm. <laughs> 